So, yeah, I lived in nine states before I was nine years old. Um, California, Texas, Kentucky, Illinois, Florida, New York, and then Tennessee. And that was all, I, Tennessee was when I was nine. Like, it was all those and then Tennessee. Um, so, I've lived, like, in every region. I've spent significant time in every region except the Northwest. Um and I think that was like really big for my development too. It's probably also why I make so many like connections and um, just be my experience is like extremely varied from like a very uh, young age. But yeah, so obviously I was living in those states for like eight months to 18 months, you know, some of those states. It wasn't a long time. I was only nine when I got to Tennessee. Um, so I think Winter Haven was probably, you know, when you're that young, like, like one year is one seventh of your life. So it's a long time, you know, it's like, it felt like a long time. I remember all my friends, I remember like the school, everything from, you know, auditioning for Double Dare and all that stuff. But I think it probably was only, yeah, somewhere between nine months, 12 months, maybe, you know, maybe like 16 months or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think all of those, like I, I, especially since I was so young, I had different developmental stages in each of those states, made friends in each of those states and kind of took and and just had like this uh this like collage of a childhood you know of like memories and experiences to kind of pull from and yeah i really think that's that's why my brain like makes connections between things that people might not see connections to um and yeah there's something to that like moving around always being the new kid um, my mom always framed all of it as like like each move as a very cool like opportunity and always framed it very very uh in a very positive light so it was always like an adventure it was never um was never upset about it or like scared about it or like sad about leaving friends she was very good at like oh you don't have to stop being friends and we're gonna make new friends we're gonna like go to a new place it's gonna be like a new adventure um and so i yeah i got good at it's, it's like a gift and a curse because i got good at leaving um and kind of not feeling that sadness you know it's very easy for me even now to travel. Um, if I had to move away, like from even my like very best friends, I, of course I'd be sad, I'm a human, but <laughs> I am a human, I promise. But uh, it wouldn't be like as hard for me as I think the average person, you know? I would be like, we're gonna see him again. Cause that's another thing mom would like, uh, we would always take trips and whenever we take a trip, we see the people that, you know, um, we've built these relationships with, even if it was like years before or whatever. Um, my mom actually just came through like the other week and, uh, they're, <laughs> they live in Arizona now. They haven't lived here in like 10 years and she came to see us. And then her and my grandparents went down to like, the area that I grew up in in Tennessee in Bedford County to see like all the friends that they had made there so like that's just kind of like a a reoccurring rhythm um in my life so it kind of like affects it, it affects a lot actually the only time that uh the only time that I was upset that we were moving was from New York to Tennessee that was the only move uh and it was because we had never, well, we had lived, we had lived in the South, but not 
I was too young to like know any type of like history, um, like any type of racial tension um, or like history about the South. And but by the, but in New York, um, I was old enough. So like, you know, that was like, oh, we're moving again. That wasn't that big a deal. But then when when he said we were moving to Tennessee, that was a big deal. It was a big deal for my mom, too. It was a big I think it probably was as big a deal to me because I could see how like mom reacted. She did not want to live in the South. She did. She specifically did not want to raise like her sons in the South. And so she was kind of like scared and upset about that try to put on a brave face but definitely scared of that reality for sure a- afraid of what exactly just like uh, racial inequality yeah in the, so i mean the they're they, you know um mom and dad born and raised in california um their mom's parents going back uh three generations um and dad's two generations um like in california so they're like rooted there you know and the west coast is especially the bay area where they're from very diverse um and just doesn't have like um i mean has very little slavery history uh and um a more mild jim crow history than the south i mean it happened everywhere, but South is a whole different ball game, you know? Um, so, and, you know, stuff has, I mean, as we know now, but I think, you know, at the time that we were growing up, a lot of people were, well, I guess a lot of people still deny it now, but a lot of people were very uneducated and denied that stuff was still going on. I mean, in the 90s, there were still people being, um, drug behind trucks in Mississippi and um, still being lynched. And I mean, uh, <clears throat> police brutality, profiling, this stuff happens whether the cameras are there or, or not. I think that, you know, having everybody having access to high quality cameras, not only high quality cameras, but then internet access to immediately be able to upload and share um without gatekeepers um you know without having to run to a news station and being like i caught this on my camcorder or i i caught this on my digital camera we need you to run a story going to the newspaper i have this information and it's just i'm gonna post this right now you know what i mean and so i think that those barriers have come down and it's allowed it's allowed that stuff to kind of especially with the new gener new generations um coming up like that's what has put it in the mainstream news cycle. Not that it's just now happening, but that um, that access to kind of like uh, the like the 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 gates to accountability have been lowered because people like anybody can upload video and stuff like that. Yeah, um, which is now a new problem because people can chop it screw it however <laughs> they want to do it and put it out there for everyone to view it yeah and okay. it's All like right. no longer is it whether or not you're seeing it it is how believable is this instead. yeah hey y'all we hope you loved this conversation here at young married christian we are on a mission to see a gospel-centered home made available for every single child in the foster care system there are four hundred thousand kids in the foster care system and there are four hundred thousand churches in america wow that is crazy. This is absolutely a solvable problem, and we want to be a part of it. If you want to join us in that mission, text the word FREEDOM to 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. And another thing you can do that is really helpful is to smash the like button on this video. Smash it like Satan's face. Crush it like it's Lucifer's head. It really helps us a ton. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. That's it. <laughs> smash the like button on this video.